Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen. Guys, bringing you the very latest, the latest news from the most successful team in football from Glasgow Rangers, guys. And if you want the latest news, if you want your team every day, there is only one way to make sure that you get your team every day. And that's to hit the sub, ring the notification bell and give this video a like, guys. It really does help out with our YouTube algorithm, guys. Also, I just want to say a huge, massive thank you to everyone who has uh, subscribed to the channel in recent and times guys the channel is growing unbelievably well over 900 subs now we are so close getting so close to hitting that magic 1000 mark so please continue to hit that sub but continue to ring that notification bell and obviously give the video a like guys it does help out as victoria and i aim to bring you daily rangers news daily rangers content um all the very latest from the most successful team in football well bits and pieces of news to bring you today as regards the first team as regards obviously the five games that remain in this season Season. Um, in addition to that, obviously, news that uh, famous chef Gordon Ramsay is getting involved, and also further news about that perspective takeover stroke investment. Uh, more of that to come later. Let's talk, uh, start. Let's start off by talking about Rangers young stars. Now, a lot of people have said that they want the uh, five. They want the in the last five games of the season, the young players to be given their opportunity. Their young players be able to get their chance to come and play in the first team and impress with the fact that in these last five games. Well, realistically, there's not a lot riding on these last five games, is there now? They're all dead rubbers. I think probably the only game that carries sort of any weight at all is that last game against them. Um, that last old firm game at Ibrox is, you know, every old firm game carries its own weight. Well, Alex Lowry is one player that's been talked about. Adam Devine is another one. Leon King is another player that's been talked about as needing to get first team minutes obviously Robbie McCrory as well um in goal now developments have happened today as well rumors obviously regarding Alex Lowry now Alex Lowry apparently could leave Rangers um if he is not given the opportunity to impress between now and the end of the season the 19 year old star has only featured twice for twice in the Scottish Premiership during the 22-23 campaign. Yes, he has had some time out injured, and obviously he lost his mother's father sadly this year. His last outing came against Hearts in December 2022. It's believed that Lowry wants to be given a substantial playing time to impress. In addition to him, you know, Adam Devine will want to be playing time to impress, as will Leon King. It really will be a test, I think, you know, into these last five games to see if Michael Beale really does fancy these players and think these young players have a future at the club. Uh, one pundit even went as far as to say, I think if Michael Beale really believes in them, I think he will play them between now and the end of the season. If he doesn't, I don't think you'll see them at Rangers next year. Alex Lowry, Leon King, Alex and Adam Devine. If he thinks they're going to be Rangers players going forward, he will give them a few games between now and the end of the season. There's nothing left to lose now. He's got to know if they can handle it. Two or three games, the big expectant crowds at Ibrox, I would play them. And as I say, I think there will be a massive changes at Rangers during the summer. So he needs to see what he's got in a lot of these young players. So... It really is a situation where we need to see the likes of Lowry, we need to see the likes of Divine, we need to see the likes of King, and we need to see the likes of uh, Robbie McCrory. Now, if Alex Lowry isn't given playing time between now and the end of the season, does that send a message to the young man that he really does not have an opportunity to really break through at Rangers and a chance to really impress at Rangers? This is the perfect opportunity to blood these young players, to blood the likes of Lowry, Divine, McCrory, King, even your perhaps even Lovelace to some extent as well. So this is the time to really go for it. If Beals doesn't do it in these next five games, is that sending a message to these young players? And does that send a wider message to the, to a lot of the young players at Rangers that perhaps there isn't the pathway to the first team that they would hope there would be? Obviously, it's going to be a critical few games for these young players to really impress. I, for one, really hope we do see the likes of Lowry, Divine, Lovelace, your king in these last few games. We've got nothing left to lose. Now, there was also people talking on heart and hand tonight about the fact that many believe that Alan, Alan McGregor will be given the last five league games as kind of a farewell tour and that Robbie McCrory won't be given any minutes. Now, this would go against, obviously, what Michael Beale has said this season. For me, McCrory's got to play. You know, 
Alan McGregor's time in the club is coming to an end. We need to see what we've got in McCrory. Is he the kind of goalkeeper that is, you know, up to being Rangers number one? Or is he, you know, just a backup? What is McCrory? And yes, I know he's been linked with Jack Butland. But for me, we have to see what McCrory's got. And the only way to really test out the young man is to play him in these five remaining, or at least the majority of these five remaining SPL games. If you don't, you're not going to know what you've got in him. And then, obviously, you've got a situation where next season, McCrory could well demand a move away because, let's face it, if he's not getting first-team football at his age, he's going to want an opportunity to go somewhere where he is going to get first-team football. So this is a really important, I think, point in the season now for these young players to really, obviously, have the opportunity to come in and impress in the first team. Now, there's been a lot of talk in the papers and in podcasts and the media as regards takeover talk. Now, John Bennett obviously has not made any comment on this. Um, David Edgar of Heart and Hand speaking about the takeover, uh, possible a possible takeover of Rangers or any possible takeover of Rangers, uh, talked about the fact that it would be exceptionally hard for any one party to come in and actually take a controlling interest in Rangers, given the fact that the shares are so disparately owned across the board. No one board member has a massive majority shareholding, like in a lot of other clubs, where if you buy out one, one, uh, one shareholder, you take the majority of the club. Lots of different share percentages ex exist within our boardroom. 32%, 15%, 12% here, 5% there. So for anyone who would want to actually take over the club would have be faced with a difficult prospect of getting control of Rangers. They would very much need to go and talk to two to three to four individuals to get a controlling stake in the club and then work from there obviously to expand it to a massive controlling majority. However, there has been talk in the press of recent days and on a number of podcasts and on, on social media about a prospective investment from America. Now, it's not clear yet whether or not this is an investment into the club or a prospective takeover, but it does seem to be gathering some steam and it's been talked about in several different areas, not just on podcasts like Gallant Few and Heart and Hand, but also are in the media, in the Daily Record, the Scotsman, on Ibrox News, on websites, on Rangers Review this morning or yesterday morning, there's been an awful lot of talk about this takeover or prospective investment into the club. It appears to, like I said, be gathering some steam. Now, if there is any truth in this, this would be great news for Rangers. As long as any investor stroke takeover person would come in and actually run the club in the interest of the club and not for themselves. As Rangers fans, we don't want someone to come in and start to asset strip and turn the club into a investment that pays them out money rather than obviously putting money in there to, to develop the playing squad, to develop this team into a team that is truly capable of competing with Celtic and competing in Europe for seasons to come. Now, a few people have mentioned the fact that a few a month or so ago, uh, Chairman, Dave, uh, not Chairman, uh, Board Member Dave King talked about the fact that he had a 40 pence offer for his shares, which were valued at 25 pence, but refused to name the party that was interested. Obviously, straight away denied that it was Kyle Fox, that it was another investor from elsewhere. Now, it may appear this investor may have been that American investor seeking to get some money and some interest in Rangers. If this is true, this is great news for the club. Um, a massive investment will be a huge shot in the arm. Now, what appears to help these rumours to gather some momentum is the fact that the club is currently undergoing massive change at the top, very top of the club. It was felt that any investor that came in would want somewhat of a clean slate to work with. And the fact that obviously John Bennett has taken over from Douglas Park, that um, Stuart Robertson has left and been replaced by James Bisgrove, that Craig Mulholland has left and we don't have an academy director, that Ross Wilson has left and we don't have a director of football, that Dixon has left and we don't have a finance director, certainly gives that investor an opportunity to, to, to help to mould the club and to have that clean slate to put in put their own stamp on this team and help with the future building of putting players and putting players, putting coach, coaches, managers, executives into key positions. And that is certainly something that may be attractive given that clear out that seems to have taken place over the last few weeks. It does very much seem that uh, a new broom in John Bennett has come and has swept clear a lot of the old, the player, the 
how can I put this? People associated with the old regime and he's seeking to put that, put his own stamp on it. Or is he claiming it because he knows that there is an investor possibly interested and would be interested if there's an opportunity for them to come in and put their own stamp on that? Given the fact, obviously, the club is unlikely to move on from Michael Beale, so there's no chance for them to put, them, put their own stamp on it in terms of a head coach or manager. But in terms of appointing a sporting director, a finance chief, for example, and a new academy head, there is definitely scope there for someone to come in and make that effect. So is this a sign that we are preparing the, bo the board, preparing the club, ready for a new investment or even possibly a takeover from elsewhere? Like I said, if it is from America or it is from anywhere else, I would certainly welcome that if these people have the genuine interest of the club at heart. Okay, guys, so moving on now, the other bit of news tonight, obviously, is the congratulations to the Rangers women's team who beat Celtic tonight 1-0. Always good to get one over on our old firm rivals. About time we did after, obviously, the 6-5 defeat in the Youth Cup final, the defeat at the weekend in the semi-final. Rangers women coming up proud and winning 1-0 tonight for Rangers. Well, the ladies, fantastic result in your pursuit, obviously, of that uh, women's uh, Scottish League title. Further news, guys. Now, this man here has decided to get back involved with the club. Yes, Gordon Ramsay, uh, Rangers boyhood fan, has decided that it is time for him to become involved with Rangers once again. And this is what James Bisgrove had to say about Gordon Ramsay's involvement. He said the Blue Sky Lounge restaurant has already been incredibly popular with our supporters and with Gordon's signature menu being introduced soon. I'm sure it will continue to be a must visit restaurant in Glasgow. Ibrox is quickly becoming a destination in its own right for Rangers supporters and for visitors from all over the world. You know, yet again, an example of James Bisgrove working to bring in alternative revenue streams and alternative marketing strategies to sell the club beyond Glasgow and beyond Europe. Gordon Ramsay is a worldwide recognised name in the United States, in Asia, all over the world and his association with Rangers Club, Rangers Football Club and his direct association with them through this menu and getting involved with the restaurant is certainly going to help the club to go and find alternative revenue streams. Now, obviously, Edmiston House is one that brings in that million pound a year prospectively and obviously, you know, other things like merchandising and et cetera, et cetera. Now, Bisgrove's major successes have been in, in the commercial side of the business. And this is an example of him going that bit further to try and bring in that alternative revenue stream to increase the amount of money coming into the club to aid the club to grow and stay on a financially sound footing. Gordon Ramsay had this to say about the involvement. From a very young age, I dreamt about having my name up in lights at Ibrox. Whilst my football career may have ended prematurely, I'm proud and delighted to have partnered with the Rangers team to develop an exclusive menu for the iconic stadium. Menu by Gordon Ramsay. Apparently it features, this is not Gordon Ramsay's words, but this is the report of the Rangers website. It features a stunning menu of seasonal produce and standout dishes, all chosen by Gordon Ramsay himself to give a unique dining experience. This certainly seems to be good news for the club. And again, is starting to sell the club beyond Glasgow and sell the club as a worldwide brand name. When you can get someone involved like Gordon Ramsay, like I said, who is a worldwide renowned person who is going to bring in those alternative revenue streams. Again, this can only stand the club in excellent stead going forward. Yet another example of James Bisgrove working hard to develop his role and to develop his profile amongst Rangers supporters. Obviously, we've got the... Uh, the fan forum that he is organizing, which is coming up very soon, which I mentioned on my video yesterday, which is great news that he is automatically straight away engaging with the um, with the fans of that. Obviously, that being on the Wednesday, the 21st of June. There seems to be a real drive amongst this board to be open, to be transparent, to engage with fans. But not only that, but to look for and bring in alternative revenue streams and alternative investments to Rangers to enable them to continue to grow and develop as a club. Fantastic news indeed. So guys, as always, lots of news concerning the club. Again, we'll always be here. We'll always bring you your daily Rangers news shot, obviously bringing you news, views, updates, transfer rumours, all sorts of more information about Glasgow Rangers. And if you want all that news, if you want all the very latest reports, you need to hit that sub. You need to ring that notification bell, set it to all, so you get all those reminders on your phone, on your mobile device, or on your computer. That is the only way to make sure you get them. And guys, it's all free. Absolutely free. Don't charge you a single penny for this. Thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. 
As always, guys, I'll be back with you again very soon here on the channel, here on Glasgow Rangers Nation.